morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. It's so lovely to see the kids still active in our church. Um, you know, seeing Sophia and uh, and some of the other kids, huh? Caesar and Isaac. Yeah, Caesar and Isaac. I'm, forgive me if I don't know all the names, but seeing the kids picking up the offering, doing their part, you know, it, it's, it's so beautiful in God's eyes. You, you, they don't understand um, just how much they do for the Lord. You know, but it reminds me of when my kids were small and they, too, would not shy away from it. They were always willing, you know, to be part of what God has in store for them. Can you show them when you used to do it? Yeah, but I don't like to think that far back. <laughs> but thank you for that, Mom. <laughs> if you ever feel you're floating up and you're too high, Mom, so I'll always bring you back to reality. Don't ever forget that. But that's why we love them. All right, so I have a dear message for us today. Um, to some it may be very important, to some it may be something they already know, but the thing is, is uh, it's something we should all know and all be very aware of. So let me have a word of prayer real quick and then we will begin. Father in heaven, I stand here, Father, asking you to put me behind the cross, Father, to hide me from everything and every, anything and everything that reveals any of this message to me, and may it be relate to you, Father. May your words be presented here. May the Holy Spirit guide me and the words that I say, and may they uh, may it open the hearts of those who are listening and the minds uh, to allow them to make the decision, Father, for themselves to serve you. We ask you, Father, to send your Holy Spirit to remove all distractions and uh, things that may block out what needs to be heard. And we know that the enemy is always active and gets excited when one of us derails off of your GPS system, Father. So we ask you to just allow us to focus and be with each and every one of us here today. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. How's everybody doing today? Good? Did you have a long week? Are you ready for rest? Has the Sabbath been a blessing to you? It should be. It's been a blessing to me. Um, here today, sitting all around you in this room, are six different kinds of listeners. We have the preoccupied, the out-to-lunchers, the whatevers, the combatants, the analysis, and the engagement. Now, if you don't know what those are, I'm going to give you some definitions, so be ready. And we'll first begin with the preoccupied. These are the people who come across as rush and are constantly looking around for doing something else, also known as multitaskers. And these are the people who cannot sit around and sit still and listen. We also have the out to lunchers. These are people who are physically here, but mentally they're not. This is determined by the blank look on their faces and the occasional drool. They're either daydreaming or thinking about something else entirely. They're not here. The whatevers. These people remain aloof and will show little reaction when listening. They don't seem to care about anything you have to say. Anyone who forced them to come to church is a whatever. Are you forced to be here today? I hope not. And we have the combatives. These people are armed and ready for an argument. They listen only to find the flaw in what you say or how you say it. And they enjoy disagreeing with whatever it is that said instead of applying the word. They dismiss the sermon by pointing out some of the minor point or unrelated issue, highlighting the flaw in the communication or the communicator. Then we have the analysis. 
These are the people who constantly are in the role of counselor. They're ready to provide you with a few, this is how you could have said this better ideas, but do very little, if any, personal application to their own lives. Have I got your attention yet? And, last but not least, we have the engagers. These are the consciously aware listeners. They listen with their eyes, ears, and hearts, and want more than anything to hear, the, hear what God is saying to them personally. This is listening at the highest level. Their listening skills encourage you to continue talking and giving you the opportunity to grow from God's Word yourself. Which one are you? Now, Jesus talked in parables. And there was a parable that was said about a sower who was in a vineyard planting seeds. And he talked about different uh, grounds and different textures and paths that were seeds were being brought. First was the hard walking path. Second, the thin soil that sits in a rock layer, and the soil filled with thorny weeds, and last but not least, the good soil. Now each of these soils is represented a different human part. They describe the different reactions people have to salvation in Christ alone. The different ways the human heart listens to the truth. So with the hard, weedy, and rocky soil, it describes someone who is not listening. What happens when we don't listen with our ears through spirit and only hear with our deceiving heart? We fall short all the time. Has God stopped trying to get your attention? Let's hope not. I believe God is calling you, but it's up to you to respond. But what is God calling you for to, in life? What is He asking of you? How does He call you? Maybe you meet someone whose godly life challenges you, or you read or hear something that creates a longing for something more. Maybe you try to live a good life and react in a good way, but always fall short, and you're left feeling empty deep down inside. This is God calling to you, saying, saying can you hear me now? The title of my sermon is this, Can You Hear Me Now? Because if we don't hear the calling now, when are we going to hear it? Do we want to hear it? Are we listening for it? See, there's a silence in this room, and it tells me that I got your attention. And the silence says that if God is calling you, then you should be able to hear His call. In Hebrews 1, 1 through 2, the Bible says, God, who at various times and various ways spoke in times past to the fathers and the prophets, and in these last days has spoken to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. God sent His Son Jesus here to earth as a human being, where He experienced the same temptations and trials we do, but He never gave to sin. In this way, He left His example to follow. So what does God call of me, you might ask? For many people of faith, this question is alternately a source of mystery, frustration, confusion, and hope. Does God have a fine-tuned plan for each and every one of us? Or is God's call more general with the details left to us? You'd likely find the same number of answers as the number of people that you ask. But there is work that God calls us to do, and it is laid out all through the Bible. God makes it very clear again and again that we are to love others, care for the poor, and live our lives in such a way that we point to the power of the gospel. Where does the power of the uh, gospel come from? Holy Spirit. It comes from the Holy Spirit. And who is watching over us and guiding us each and every day as we move with the Holy Spirit? God. We should be emulating who? Jesus. In the book of Proverbs 31, 8-9, the Bible instructs us to speak and defend those who cannot. 
It says, speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. For the right of, for the right, oh, sorry, who are destitute, speak up and judge fairly and defend the rights of the poor and the needy. The Bible provides more instructions for us in Isaiah 1.17. Let's go to Isaiah 1.17 and let's see what is instructed for us. Because I want you to see what the Word of God says, not just listen to what I am saying. And if you are there, let me know by saying an Amen. One? Amen one? Or is everybody there? Okay. I hear pages, but I'll read. So in the book of uh, uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter one, verse seventeen, it says, Learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, and plead for the widow. says the Lord, through your sins like a scarlet, that they shall be white as snow. Though they are like red crimson, they shall be as wool. The whole heart must be yielded to God, or the change can never be wrought in us, by which we are to be restored to His likeness. By nature we are alienated from God, but God desires to heal us, to set us free. But since this requires an entire transformation, a renewing of our whole nature, we must yield ourselves wholly to Him. Are those instructions confusing? Pretty straightforward. I mean, I understood them. Let's keep going. In Isaiah 58, 67, it says this, It is not this kind of fasting I have chosen to loosen the chains of injustice and unite the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. Continuing, it is, not to share your, is it not to share your food with the hungry and provide the poor with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from their, your own flesh and blood? Who is our flesh and blood? Our brothers and our sisters. Those who we come in contact with daily. How about Micah 6 8? What does it say? He has shown you in mortal what is good and what the Lord requires of you to and justly and to love mercy and walk humbly. What was that word? Humbly. That means not of yourself, but of God. To walk humbly with your God. We need to empty ourselves. When we start to understand just what God has in store for us in His plan, and we humble ourselves, we will no longer seek our wills, but only God's. And then after this change, it will show out in our lives to others who moves us and who we trust and obey. And how might you ask by representing God each and every day of our lives? One way is we don't worry. If we worry, then we are in control. We must let go of the worry and the fear and allow God to be in control. Matthew 6, 33 and 34 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Did it say one or two things, or did it say all? Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Right there in the Bible, it's very clear. Do not worry. Um, I am in the New King James Version. Yeah, there is. Jesus himself instructed his disciples in the book of Mark, in chapter 16, verse 15, which includes us to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And there's more instructions in 1 Corinthians 7, uh, verse 17. Nevertheless, each person should live as a, as a believer in what the situation the Lord has assigned them, just as God has called them. This, the rule, I lay down to all the churches. That means every single one of us has a role to play. Now, I'm not a pastor, but I am willing. And that's how we should be, willing. No matter what's put in front of us, we should be willing. And this is what God asked of us. Should we be desiring to be yoked with Jesus? Of course we should. Yes, we should be desiring to be yoked with Jesus. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 6. there, let me know by saying amen. 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 Okay, I will begin. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and all in you all. Are you being called? This says we are being called. And if you want more evidence, let's go to 1 Timothy, uh, chapter 2, verse 4. And let's see what it says. Remember, we're following the instructions of what has been presented to us in God's Word. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 4. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth? God has an incredible plan for each and every one of us. And in this plan, He wants to use you. Yes, each and every one of you. Not just me, you as well. And why is that? Because God loves each and every one of us. Remember, John 3.16 says, that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe it shall not perish but have everlasting life. What does that mean? We can emulate Jesus. We can die each and every day for God. And our reward is eternity with our Creator. What about 1 Peter 2, 9-10? What does it say? It says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness. You see, there's that word again, called. Somebody is calling you. And into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received, but now you have received mercy. God is calling you and representing and showing, demonstrating His love. Can you hear Him now? He's been trying to tell you something very important. He wants to save you from a life of sin and unhappiness and give you a life of true peace and joy and with purpose. 
God is calling you. He is calling to remind you that He loves you. Can you hear Him? How long has it been since you've heard God calling you? If you if your answer anything but uh, but that you can hear Him, then we need to re uh, acquaint ourselves with our Creator. Especially today, it's pivotal. Um, in today's lesson study, uh, we emphasize on how important it is to put the full armor of God on each and every day. Thank you, Diego, for that. And Kathy. Um, because we know what we're facing out there. And it's a, it's a, it's a power uh, like nothing that we are familiar with. But God has revealed the blueprint but he's also revealed the tools and weapons that we need to defeat the enemy. But we have to hear his calling.
Each and every one of us here is desiring to put you first in our hearts and in our minds. We ask you to allow us to humble ourselves and repent and change from our ways. And may you be, may you be the desire that we seek, Father. Give us the, the, uh, the want and the feeling of being able to talk to you in heaven face to face. To hear your voice, not just in our minds, but with our ears in front of us. We want to be able to teach others about the love that you present to us as well, Father. So we ask you to give us the strength and send the Holy Spirit to guide us in that journey. Those that may be here, Father, that are standing, have made a pledge to follow you and to change their ways and to hear the message that you could share each and every day. To do the work that needs to be done and to... Uh, be with those who are in need, Father, whether it's for food or for clothes or just a nice, simple hello or a smile. May your love be represented in our actions, Father. We ask you to continue to uh, remind us that what your son did on the cross is merely a miracle that nobody can produce but you. And that if we are willing, we too can be a sacrifice to represent your love. We want to thank you again, Father, for um, the blessings that you provide throughout the week, the blessings of life of our children, and remind us that even the small blessings are all from you, Father. And I ask you to be with uh, these um, uh, children of yours and remind them that no matter how difficult things may get in their life, you are with them every step of the way. We thank you again, Father, and we want to continue to hear the call from you and all these things we ask in Jesus name if you are standing then remember God is waiting to hear your voice God is waiting for you to connect with him Jesus is seeking the relationship with you and today uh, could be um, too late so don't let nothing hinder nothing make the decision Thank you again. Peace out.